morning. You've tuned into ET now. This is Buy Now, Sell Now. I'm Karunya Rao, and with me is Varun Hiramat. Let's uh, understand how the market uh, move is looking like right now. Nifty is up about uh, six tenths of a percent, firmly above fourteen thousand four hundred marks, and six has gained uh, a little over three hundred points as we speak. Uh, so yeah, largely the benchmarks seem to be doing quite comfortably well right now. But it's the broader market which is actually bucking the trend and underperforming. In fact, if you look at the mid cap index, it has lost uh, more than a hundred, hundred and thirty points as we speak. Small cap index also trading with slim losses at, as we speak. Uh, you also have a Nifty Bank which has turned red. It's down about six tenths of a percent. Do remember the index had opened in the green, but right now is witnessing some selling pressure. PSU Bank index has cracked more than 1.4 percent. Private sector lenders also looking weak right now. Metal index continues to languish. It's down more than one and a half percent. Similar quantum of gains, uh, lose losses coming in. For uh, the Nifty Media Index as well, but what has really capped the downside today and aided the markets and how is the Nifty IT space two and a half percent higher for this one? You have uh, Nifty FMCG also gain in the excess of one percent. Nifty Pharma also looking resilient. Uh, Infosys, Wipro, HCL Technologies, and TCS are among the key leaders. In fact. Uh, these IT heavyweights hit fresh uh, highs as well earlier on in the day. You also have Tata Motors looking very upbeat, uh, up almost 3%. HUL has gained close to 2%. HDFC Coal India, Dr. Reddy's and HDFC Bank, HDFC Life. In fact, all the group stocks seem to be looking very upbeat right now in trade. Despite, uh, remember, the weakness coming by in the financial spaces in the last half hour or so. What is... Uh, Cracking, on the other hand, are metal names like I flagged off, Indalco, Tata Steel, top losers on the index. So you have Adani Ports, Bajaj Finance, SPI, Axis Bank also sulking in trade. Varun, why don't you fill us in on the buy now, sell now stock cloud? Okay, let's pull up the cloud as well then quickly to understand what are the stocks that you need to keep on your radar this morning. Like I said, stellar set of numbers coming in from TCS which is keeping uh, a fair amount of, um, which is showing a fair amount of resilience in trade today among the top gainers on the Nifty 50 index. TCS is up a good 1.7%. Um, then you also have a DMART, excellent set of numbers, solid performance on the operating front, uh, one, another key gainer from the broader markets to track and trade. BEPL, Bansali Engineering and Polymers, uh, Dhamaka earnings delivered from this small cap name. Uh, you also have an Infosys and a Wipro which have had hit fresh 52 week highs. Vedanta open offer is something that's keeping the stock in focus, it's an ET now story that has now been confirmed. You also have an HDFC Life looking very, very upbeat as we speak. It's uh, gaining more than a percent at this juncture. Um, ICICI Direct has initiated a coverage with an optimistic uh, um, note uh, this morning. You also have FMCG stocks, Colgate and Tata Consumer leading the pack as far as the FMCG basket is concerned. FMCG companies are looking to hike prices to offset inflationary pressure on the back of RM costs. So these are essentially the stocks to keep on your radar, part of our PNSM stock cloud list. Varun. Yeah, thanks for that, Karunia. Um, let's get on board our experts who are with us. Time to talk technicals and fundamentals. Kunal and Ashish, good morning. Great to have you with us again on BNSN. While the markets are holding up all right, we're definitely not at the high point of the day. We began the day with exuberance and now we've definitely tapered off. Dow futures have also fallen a little bit since the morning. But uh, Kunal, what are your high risk and low risk ideas for today? Yeah, good morning, Warren. So the markets have scaled down a bit after opening uh, you know, on a much stronger note. What the SGX 50 had indicated was probably uh, you know uh, an expectation that the markets could open you know, full throttle on the upside. But nevertheless, I think it's been a you know a decent uh, you know market run. So we are bound to go through a consolidation phase on the uh, you know index. But my concentration in terms of the picks today is more towards the defensive names, and I picked up the two key sectors 
which is the you know the IT and the farm and the FMCG space. So I think both these sectors and, and individual names into these stocks they look fairly attractive. So I picked up two names. Uh, first one is a band Vipro. Now uh, you know I've been very very bullish on the stock earlier as well. And I maintain the bullish stance on the stock even from a longer term perspective. But what's intriguing is on the short term charts there are some strong uh, you know swing breakouts on Vipro on the daily time frame. So the stock at 444 445 I think looks attractive for another 20 rupees on the upside. As a near-term trader, uh, you know one could look at a target of 465, and stop loss could be kept at 435, and one could probably try and trail the stop losses higher as now the you know stock uh, you know uh, assumingly moves up on the upside. Uh, the second one is a ban HUL. Now interesting uh, because the stock after quite some time is showing signs of a you know, strong breakout on the daily as well as on the you know weekly charts. The previous resistance for HUL was just about that 2500 mark, and we've seen a lot of these other FMCG names as well. Picking up a you know, decent pace, so I would expect uh, HUL to at least retest its previous high, if not scale above that as well. Uh, so buy with a target of 2,500, and stoppers could be kept at 2,400. Okay, great. Thanks for that, Ashish. Good morning. What's on your radar today? But I think markets uh, definitely looking little, uh, uh, you know, top uh, heavy, and uh, I think one has to be very careful. So in terms of a careful idea, I have United Spirits. I think the reason my national for buying into this is that within the consumption space, this is the, hasn't moved much. Uh, the rationale for buying into United Spirits is very simple because alcohol is one uh, consumption item which is seeing a very secular growth in India. The company is a leading and a leading by a huge margin uh, player in this uh, in this market. Owned by now Diageo, which is an international leader in uh, global spirits business. Uh, so very strong management, very uh, clear leadership in, in place, uh, with a very good distribution network, a very good number of brands. Also planning to introduce more profit lines, uh, which really means more brands and more uh, brand extensions. Uh, they have got rid of most of their unrelated businesses. The working capital, uh, which was an issue earlier, is, has seen steady improvement. So I think most of the most of the uh, concerns are behind us. Uh, going forward, a very clear MNC growth uh, stock in the consumption space. The, here we have a target here of 950, which is a, about 50% upside from the current level. So, and I don't see much of any downside happening because all the concerns, whether it was the internal or external regarding uh, prohibition, have all been factored in. So, clearly, good idea, low downside risk and a good upside potential. The second one is uh, Motila Oswal uh, Financial Services. This one is a bit riskier because linked to the market. Uh, but here again, the re-rating which is happening looks uh, very uh, real. Uh, the stock underperformed due to the market and also due to concerns on their home finance uh, uh, company as well as uh, uh, you know shrinking margins in broking as well as asset management uh, underperformance. All those concerns have been addressed. Uh, the asset management business is doing very well. The SIP inflow is uh, very strong, about 130 crores. Uh, the number of new funds which have been introduced like NASDAQ fund and US fund of funds are doing uh, fairly well. Uh, stock broking, they continue to remain a very strong uh, player. They are the 11th largest stock broking firm in India and uh, pretty strong in, uh, in advisory business. As well as the home finance, the concerns have been addressed. The NPAs are now shrinking. So all these things put together, if you do a sum of parts valuation, it is very it is available at a very attractive valuation and we have a target here of 1000 which is a very significant upside from the current levels a bit risky because if the markets do go in for a significant correction then again this is a market linked stock but if you are willing to take the chance i think the upside potential is huge so these are the two ideas which i have for the day all right ashish thanks for sharing that with our viewers um, it's almost time for a break, and then we'll be back with our viewer queries. But before we do that, just an interesting analysis we've done here at ET Now as part of ET Now Insights. Um, the S&P 500 has seen the largest rally since World War II. In the months of November and December of 2020, that just went by, it's returned around 14.3% to investors, right? So we went back around seven decades, starting 1954, and did an analysis and arrived at the conclusion 
that uh, every time the S&P uh, generates a higher than 10% return in the month of November and December, the following years, Jan and full year, um, tend to do very well for that index. So if you look at 1954, the index returned around 13.9%. The following year, 1955, it returned 26%, and the following month of Jan, 2%. In 1962, when it returned around 12%, the following Jan, it returned 5% for the month of Jan alone, and then the full year return was around 19%. So if you take an average of 10-year periods, you typically get 3% in the month of Jan on the S&P, and then the rest of the year, you can get upwards of 18%. If you look at the median figure, it becomes 4% and 19%. So this year, I mean, we're still halfway through Jan. It's trending positively. We don't know where we're going to wind up. But if we look at the past, 14.3% gain in November and December of 2020 means that this year, um, the S&P 500 should do fairly well. So keep your eyes out on that one. We'll take a quick break now and be back shortly with viewer queries. Welcome back. You're still watching Buy Now, Sell Now. Uh, before we uh, start off with our viewer queries, uh, Gunal, I just wanted to understand. Um, let's talk about the three IT heavyweights, uh, this TCS, Wipro, as well as Infosys. And all three of them touched uh, fresh highs this morning. If you look at the chart pattern, uh, would you say one has more potential over the other? And in that case, which one I would, would you be placing your bets on? Okay, I think we're yet to uh, connect with Kunal. Uh, we've lost his line. Uh, Ashish, um, if you look at uh, growth prospects from here on, between the three IT heavyweights, Infosys, TCS and Wipro, where lies most potential for growth and where, where do you see more um, attractive valuation at this level? But that would clearly be Wipro, I think, because... Uh... Uh, Wipro, after the new management has taken over, is a very uh, good candidate for re-rating. Re -rating. In fact, the re-rating is already in process. If we look at the last uh, maybe one month, it has uh, done very well. So in terms of potential return, Wipro would be the stock to bet on. And uh, clearly, I think uh, with, a, with maybe a two, three years kind of a time frame this stock could uh, almost actually double from here so it has a huge potential in the upside because relatively it has underperformed the other IT majors over the last few years uh, the reason was somewhat sluggish growth and not too impressive uh, top management which has actually changed so Wipro has a lot of catching up to do so in terms of return I you know in terms of selecting one candidate out of the three uh, so I would certainly go with Wipro Okay, so Ashish uh, leaning towards Wipro. Kunal, coming to you, TCS versus Infosys, right? So do you bet on Infosys is multiple catching up? Um, that's what people said would happen, but then TCS also moves. So now again, there's a uh, mismatch between the multiple. So do you ever see Infosys trading at the same uh, level as TCS? Uh, well, difficult to say, Varun. I think it's a tricky question because both of these stocks, Infosys and TCS, they tend to move hand in hand uh, you know there has been you know many a phases and i've looked at the statistical uh, you know observations for both of these stocks very very closely over the last you know 10 to 15 years there have been phases where uh, you know infosys tends to uh, you know outperform and tcs lags behind uh, you know by a marginal bit of basis in terms of percentage uh, you know, upside but then there are uh, you know, other phases where uh, you know tcs manages to catch up and cover up the, of this underperformance so i think it all depends on what time frame one is looking at whether it's restricted towards just one phase of the market rally uh, you know then yes maybe one stock could probably outperform the other then i believe uh, you know if you're looking for uh, you know directional play then i believe that what you have to uh, you know, look out for is that whether the it stocks have uh, you know the firepower to master uh, you know further strength from current levels uh, I, for one, believe that the IT stocks are looking extremely strong from long-term breakouts. Uh, you know, from a longer-term basis, many of these stocks potentially uh, look far more stronger. So, you know, uh, I think as a classical approach, since these stocks have moved up, uh, you know, or run up uh, quite extensively on the short-term charts, 
you can have a buy on dips kind of a strategy into many of these names one of the other large cap names which i tend to prefer a lot from the it pack is wipro the stock is already at 440 plus levels so i think if you can uh, you know, do a very similar kind of an you know buying approach even to this uh, you know large cap it name i think that could also fit the bill so you have to have a mix of large cap and mid cap it names but directionally long term uh, you know uh, trajectory shows that many of these it stocks have restarted a big bull market for themselves All right. Thanks uh, for sharing your perspective on IT. Let's start off our viewer queries. First is an email from Kezad. He's based in Pune. He wants to invest in Chambal fertilizers. Given that the stock has zoomed uh, more than forty percent in the last three months, can one enter at the current market price? Kunal, uh, there you have it. A very clear-cut question. Is it a good idea to enter at two thirty-five, two thirty-six levels, or should he wait for the stock to come off a bit? So well, I'll suggest that to wait for uh, you know, the stock to come off a bit. Uh, you know what has happened is in the last three, uh, in the last one month, there have been three times that when the stock has made a fresh, uh, you know, swing high for itself. So by swing high, it means that it's managed to break past above its, uh, you know, previous, uh, you know, important high. In that sense, so in the last three swing highs, uh, apparently the indicators have made a, you know, a lower low. Now that's not a, you know, a, a positive sign, which means that the stock is rising up higher. On a lesser degree of momentum, so when the momentum fades down, you will see the stock eventually going through a you know a correction or a range bound action. And if that happens, there could be a possibility that stock may you know uh, complete those uh, you know statistical mean reversions and all of those parameters. So I would suggest that uh, on the basis of the weakness or the gradual uh, you know toning down of indicators, uh, that if you're looking for a perfect entry point or a classic entry point, then I believe closer to 210, 215. Could be a much better entry point for a stock like Chambal Fertilizer. Okay, so Kunal likes it, but he thinks that you may just get a better price. Ashish, do you concur or do you feel one can enter a Chambal even now? I concur with uh, Kunal. I think the stock has moved up a lot. Uh, though fundamentals have improved, but the run-up has been significant. So better to wait for a dip. Also. There's an event risk coming up, the union budget. So usually, fertilizer stocks and you know, the stocks of similar industries move up a lot and usually peak just before the budget. So in terms of timing, also I think it's better to wait for the budget to be out of the way, and uh, you know, see uh, see how where the stock goes. Ideally, yes, a correction would be a better time to enter. The stock has moved up a lot. Fundamentally, yes, it's a good story, uh, but uh, better to wait for a correction before entry. I think Ashish said one interesting point. The budget is coming up, and if you just look at the month before the budget, these fertilizer stocks always run up, and then they actually tend to underperform once the budget is over. But uh, so both are experts basically saying wait for a better price in Chambal, but it's a good company. Let's now move forward. Our next query is from Ashish Abraham of Cochin, and he's looking at IDFC Limited, which has of course had a tremendous run up, and he'd like to know if the risk reward is still favourable to enter now. So, of course, there's some fundamental reasons with the law that was recently changed, which means a merger could possibly happen between the bank and this uh, company. But Kunal, from a technical standpoint, uh, what are you getting? What readings are there on the chart? So, yeah, I think uh, the, the recent breakout was very, very strong for IDFC Limited, and I think what's what was very important was, you know, the the gap there was uh, in the month of November, there was this big strong gap up opening for the stock from 34 rupees. I think if I'm not wrong, to almost a 38, 39. So there's this 10% gap, uh, you know, for the stock price in this, uh, you know, correction, consolidation, and then a rise for IDFC Limited. It's not filled that gap completely. So which means that that's a strong support zone now for IDFC Limited. I think till the time the stock is trading about those 34, 35 levels, which now I believe is a very, very strong support for the stock. I think it can continue to chug along, you know, uh, go through those odd phases of correction, and then continue to move up higher you know, in terms of rally. So, uh, I think a better approach over here is to try and have a buy on dips kind of an approach. So, I think you can start off at 40 to 40, 42 and a half levels where the stock is currently trading, and if there are you know, any opportunities of dips, say uh, sub 40 levels odd, then I think you could look to average further into that stock. Okay. Ashish, uh, IDFC, um, what's the risk reward lo ratio looking like, and uh, is this a stock that you would like to recommend somebody to buy into? 
But here again, I think the run-up has been uh, very high and very significant. So again, uh, not at these levels. I think uh, wait for a decline. And even on a decline, I would favor IDFC Bank rather than IDFC Main. Um, but again, better to wait for a decline. I think more, a lot of these mid-caps have really moved up a lot. The risk reward is not favorable at the current levels. So on a decline, I would uh, prefer IDFC Bank over IDFC. Although both are good, but IDFC Bank would be a better idea. Okay, there you have it, the verdict on IDFC. Um, query number three then, it's uh, come to us via Twitter. Preeti Kaur uh, has tweeted to us, she wants our experts' recommendation on two stocks. Uh, one is ESAB India and the other is Dhanuka Agritech. She's also given details about her uh, purchasing uh, price and quantum. Uh, for ESAB, let's start with that one. She has 225 shares which she bought at 1795 levels. Kunash has already made uh, some uh, modest profits on this one. Would you recommend her to hold on to it? I recommend to book out profits over here. The stock has run up uh, you know, quite extensively. I was just looking at the long-term charts. So this is not a stock which I've been tracking quite regularly. So just looking at the recent charts uh, you know, for the stock on the long-term basis, what the stock has done in the last 10, 11 months uh, you know, post the March recovery for the markets. And I think it's been an, in an okayish kind of a stock. Recovery has been quite stable and more or less in line with how the mid-cap stocks and small-cap and the markets have behaved. The bigger catch for the stock is the, uh, you know, uh, I would say the illiquid aspect of the volumes being a bit dry. So, you know, these stocks, they tend to move up higher. So there was this period in December 1st, uh, you know, week first half, where the stock had moved up, uh, you know, from 1400 to almost 1900 plus levels. That happened on extensively strong volumes. But the moment the stock enters consolidation, you see a significant drop in volume. So that's the uh, you know bigger catch into these kind of names. So uh, you know the near term trend of the stock looks a bit exhaustive. I would suggest that if you can book out profits over here and then wait for a significant amount of correction. I think at least a 1600 to 1550 kind of a zone could be a much better target range, much better range for you to enter into a stock like ESA. Okay, and um, fundamentally, Ashish, what do you think of an ESAB? Fundamentally, it's actually very good and it's a clear leader in the structured uh, wedding market in India. 23% market share, company doing very well. So I would uh, kind of have a different view. I think the investor should hold on. I mean, agreed if the market does correct, even this stock would definitely come down. But um, having bought into it, it's a very good story. Uh, so despite the run-up, it is not so expensive. I think there is still room on the upside. I think about 10-15% more would really could really happen even without the stock getting uh, too expensive. I think the fair target would be something like 10-15% higher than the current price. So no point in selling out at these rates. I think the investor has got into a very good growth story at a good price. So stay invested. I think there is certainly more room on the upside. And uh, use, in fact, if the, if the stock does correct, uh, you could use the clients to add more. Uh, but otherwise, stay invested. Do not come out of this stock in a hurry. There is certainly room, more room on the upside. Okay, moving on to second stock that Preeti wants us to address. She has 300 shares of Dhanuka Agritech. 785 was the buying price. Again, uh, Kunal. Uh, Modest gains made here as well. The stock uh, trading near 800 uh, rupees levels. What would be your call? Well, the strategy could be a bit different over here. Uh, you know, I think the stock, uh, at least on the shorter term charts, showing signs of some technical pattern breakouts, bullish flag pattern breakout. It's broken past above the 50-day moving average as well. I think last week or the week prior to that, there was this you know breakout above 50-day moving average. Volumes were also quite strong on that breakout. So, which means that the stock is moving up higher trying to consolidate and then, you know, having a continuation up move. So these are you know, typical signs where you see where the stock changes up ranges on the upside and continues to, you know, move up higher. So I think on that regards, I would suggest a hold on Dhanuka Agro. Uh, I think in terms of a stop loss, just keep a 50-day moving average as a closing base stop loss. So I think the stock could probably close below the 50 DMA. I think that's where you can book out your positions. But I think till the time the stock could tend to move along, uh, you know, along the trend, then I believe you could probably even see levels of 850, 870 as well, possibly.
Okay, Ashish Dhanuka, uh, Agrotech, uh, Agrochemical Space is actually doing very well. All the stocks, Bharat Rasa and Sumitomo, a um, lot of the smaller ones also really showing some good traction. What do you think about this one? Yeah, I think that's the point. I think it's a very good space to be in. And for whatever reason, I think Dhanuka has underperformed most of its peers. So I really feel that the, this would get corrected going forward. So very interesting uh, stock to hold on in one's portfolio. So certainly stay invested. I don't see any reason why you should worry. The space is doing very well. The company also is doing well. And uh, moreover, like it has not done as well as other peers have done. So there's a lot of catching up with the, the stock could do any time. Uh, so stay invested and use any declines to add into this into, into this counter. Okay, great. A big thank you to both our experts. We're going to take a quick break on buy now, sell now, and we'll be back in just a minute. Welcome back. You're still watching Buy Now, Sell Now. And as TCS posts a strong Q3, reporting the best ever quarterly performance in the last nine years, we caught up with the, the CEO and MD Rajesh Gopinathan and the COO NG Subramaniam to get their views on the same and the way forward. Listen in. in multiple levels, whether it is from a technology perspective, whether it is from an operating model perspective, and even more importantly, from our uh, customers' business transformation positioning perspective, uh, we have invested steadily through the cycle and uh, uh, positioned ourselves in a manner in which uh, we are at pole position to uh, uh, participate in this opportunity. So we are uh, very confident when we look at it from a slightly longer uh, horizon per, uh, perspective. Uh, beyond that, quarter on quarter where it goes, uh, very difficult for us to call. And uh, more importantly, given the return to uh, stability as it were, uh, we will also now stay away from giving too much of uh, forward guidance. And just happy new year to you once again. Uh, and just the order book for TCS is at an all time high, almost nearing $7 billion. There was a double digit growth in the order book for the year gone by, and even sequentially, there is a big uptick in order, order book. Uh, how does one understand the order book momentum in terms of growth? Will it be double digit or what we've seen in last couple of quarters is more like a sugar rush which has happened because of the entire, uh, uh, because of COVID? Uh, thank you, Nikonj. And uh, at the outset, let me wish you and your viewers uh, a very happy and a healthy new year. Uh, you know, if you look at the last few quarters, we have been consistently delivering, you know, your total um, contract value in excess of about $6 billion, right? I think I will attribute this to our proactive investments, uh, innovative and market-leading offerings. Mm -hmm. It's also a, an endorsement or a vindication of the relative competitiveness that we have in the marketplace, right? Uh, overall, you know, we are pleased that in this particular quarter, um, almost every unit, uh, why almost every unit of ours, including all the geographies and products and platforms, have shown growth. And not only that they have grown, and it's also a broad-based deal wins. And I think uh, out of that $6.8 billion that we uh, talked about as a PCV. Okay, that was TCS management talking about the quarter gone by. And it was a strong performance indeed. But let's switch gears a little bit towards Vedanta. And that stock's been in the limelight recently with all that's been happening. But my colleague, Mabina Kapasi, broke a very important story last week, where she said um, an open offer was likely to be announced soon in Vedanta. And that came true over the weekend. They're looking to acquire 37.2 crore shares. That re represents around 10% of the total equity capital in the company, the rupee, rupees 160 per shares, where it's priced at. Um, and this is at a slight discount of Friday's closing price of 178, almost a 12% discount. And if this goes through, then uh, the stake will go up to 65%. But my colleague, Mubina, who broke the story, is now joining in. Over to her. 
We told you first and now it's official. Vedanta Limited's promoters have launched a voluntary open offer to buy a 10% stake or roughly about 37 crore shares at a price point of six, 160 rupees. That's roughly a 12% discount of Friday's closing market price. This comes just a few months after Vedanta's promoters made a failed attempt to delist Vedanta Limited. For the purpose of this delisting, they picked up almost about $3 billion of debt, so they definitely do have the financial ammunition. Moreover, they just about two weeks ago purchased a 5% stake via creeping acquisition. For that, they spent roughly about 3,000 crores. And if this entire voluntary open offer does go through and you know Vedanta's uh, group is able to pick up the 10% stake in Vedanta Limited, they will spend a little under 6,000 crore rupees. So roughly, um, you know, Vedanta group uh, has shelled out or will shell out rather a little over a billion dollars to increase their stake by 15% in the last, um, you know, in, in this one odd month. So from 50%, uh, the promoter has raised their stake now to 65%. They couldn't do a delisting, so now they're using those finances to increase their stake in Vedanta Limited. Let me tell you what exactly is uh, the SEBI regulation as well around this. Um, the takeover code was tweaked and relaxed in June. Uh, so there was a creeping acquisition limit, which was at 5%. That was hiked to 10%. And there was also rules around the voluntary open offer uh, that as well had been relaxed. Uh, there were restrictions on who can launch a voluntary open offer. And, uh, you know, Vedanta ordinarily would not have fallen under that because they just purchased a 5% stake. But now that too has been relaxed and the group sure is, um, you know, taking opportunity uh, of these relaxation uh, of, you know, the takeover codes. Well, there you have it. Time for a quick break now and we'll be back in just a minute. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're still watching Buy Now, Sell Now, and it's time to unveil the answer to our quest question. We asked you this morning which steel company has posted the highest growth in FY21 thus far. The options were Sale, JSW Steel, Tata Steel, and JSPL. The correct answer is option D, JSPL. Congratulations to our quiz champions, Umesh, Chetan, and Mukesh Kumar Agarwal. Thank you for all of our viewers for participating in the quiz on a daily basis. Back to you, Varun. Yep, that was the BNSN quiz answer and uh, we encourage all of our viewers to keep participating on a daily basis. But an important index has been birthed or formed, you can say, the Financial Services Index and it will be added to FNO very soon. Um, actually today, it's effective from today. And it's a 20 stock index with the availability of weekly futures and options. My colleague Jayesh will now bring you more details on what exactly is in this index and uh, what the lot sizes are. The Nifty Financial Services Index is going to be included in the derivative segment effective today. Now, what's the difference between this as well as the Nifty Bank is that, uh, you know, it tracks uh, other financial services like uh, the financial institutions, housing finance companies and insurance companies as well. The index has uh, 20 stocks and, uh, you know, it will be available in the weekly futures as well as weekly options. Now, remember that this is the first time uh, we will have weekly futures on any particular index level as well with a lot size of 40. Now, if you have a look at uh, how the index is uh, made up of uh, the top five stocks contribute more than 75% weight and are largely comprised of the banking stocks. Whereas you have one stock which is HDFC that has a weightage of 17.5%. The top 10 stocks contribute more than 93% weightage. And if you have a look at the price performance of uh, the index, it has been an outperformer in the uh, longer term. However, in the short term, it has been an underperformer, especially in the last one year. However, last five years, if you have a look at the performance, it has more than doubled for itself versus Nifty's gain of about 90% and uh, the Nifty Bank's gain of about 102%. that let's understand how the uh, results panned out for both DMART as well as BEPL both stellar set of numbers uh, delivered for this uh,
quarter gone by. Uh, DMART well returned uh, back to the growth trajectory. They've posted better than expected performance in Q3 as well. So uh, that is something that's keeping the stock a buzz in trade, especially the uh, margins if you look at it, 9.1% uh, versus 8.8%. So a healthy 30 basis points expansion despite uh, the weak market, fund, um, market and consumer trends overall. Uh, but yeah, they've said that uh, there has definitely been a sequential improvement in business as well as the financial metrics, overall sales and sale mix now almost back to pre-COVID levels. Um, however, they said that they could see some impact on sales mix and the margins in the near term because uh, uh, there is still uh, some availability crunch for certain categories which is likely to get worse before getting better. The, the raw material prices are also going up and companies could be taking a price hike on the back of that as well. They said they will continue um, soft launches for DMART ready, small trials and reviews and control acceleration will be the way forward for DMART ready. Overall, uh, the commentary has been fairly positive and uh, the numbers also are quite well. They're speaking for itself. Good growth seen across segments as far as uh, the stock of DMART is concerned. Um, let's move on and talk about BEPL as well. Uh, the Maka earnings coming in from there, revenue is up almost 60%. EBITDA came in at 44.8% versus 9.4%. So look at the phenomenal jump it has seen. Uh, adjusted profits came in at 136.3 crores versus 17 crores YOY. So an all-round stellar set of performance and growth seen by uh, by BEPL for the quarter gone by and needless to say that the stock is also looking very upbeat up a solid five and a half percent. And on that note, um, we're completely out of time here on Buy Now, Sell Now. Thanks for watching. Keep it with ET Now.